Hey, Shannon, have you heard anything lately? You know what, Tanner? I have. What have you heard? I heard that you can email your questions, your comments, and your show title ideas to poppetscorner at gmail.com. Are you telling me that our fans can actually be involved with the show by submitting their questions, comments, or show topic ideas to poppetscorner at gmail.com? That's right. Poppetscorner at gmail.com. That's spelled P-O-P-P-I-T-T-S corner at gmail.com. Submit your emails now. What's going on, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Poppers Corner. Thoroughly excited to be doing this. I got Mr. Brett Davis. How you doing, sir? I am good. Thank you very much. Of course, and Melissa of Stygian Crown joining us today. Really appreciate a moment of you guys' time. You just slayed this fucking place to the ground. So, <laughs> thank, thank you. you. Is this your guys' first time? I know it's not yours, but for you, uh, Melissa, is this actually your first time playing the uh, San Diego Metal Swap Meet? It's actually my first time being at the San Diego Metal Swap Meet at all. So, yeah, I was uh, divergenized today. <laughs> <laughs> How many is this now? I think it's 12. But oh. don't quote me on that. Izzy I'm, said 13 losing, earlier, but... Yeah. It could be 13. I'm losing track. <laughs> wow. And, of course, we have Mr. Brian Parker of the San Diego Metal Swap Meet here today. Thanks again for having this uh, for the 13th or 12th year, whichever yeah. one at this point. Yeah, thank you. So this is, what, your sixth show? Yeah. Did we establish this? Sixth yeah, show? Sixth show, yes. yeah. Is this your specific first time fronting an actual original project because i know you do some cover stuff on the side is that correct uh, i used to do covers and this is not my first original band but it's my first doom band so yeah it's been really exciting now how do you approach this specific project compared to the other stuff that you've done since this is the first i really don't have a frame of reference because i've never done a metal original project before so i just kind of came into it with my style and just hoped that it would go over <laughs> That's pretty much how it's been, yeah. I mean, it's, it's been a collaboration, so I mean, yeah. you know. And I mean, you, we're learning, too. Because, I mean, I've never been in a band with an actual person that can sing. And, I mean, let, let's let's just be very clear about that. That a lot of people think that it's just like, you, I've been playing death metal for fucking ever, and all of a sudden I'm playing songs with someone that's singing, and you have to pay attention to the riffs that you're writing to make sure that they're in a key that they can sing in and then make all of this work. It's, it's a lot more work than I ever imagined it would ever have been. So just as a, from a songwriting perspective? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. It's, it's completely different. I mean, even though we're writing songs like we're a death metal band, we just, you know what I mean? It's like we're just doing it like this and following her lead on the vocals. So initially when getting Melissa in the project, how did you approach this project before she actually stepped in here? What happened was that we were writing a bunch of songs and we I kept changing the lineup so many times. I had so many different people involved. The only person that was a constant was me. And then um, Nelson would be in and then Nelson's out. And then Jason would be in, Jason's out. And then we just kept working at it until the point where we're like, I remember we were writing, we were about like three songs into writing some songs and um, the, the guy that was, one of the guys was playing guitar for us at the time I'm just like, I'm tired. Like what we're doing is like, fuck this. I'm, I don't want to do this shit anymore. I'm tired of what we're doing, you know? And they're like, well, what the fuck do you want to do? And I said, I want to be in candle mass. And here we are. <laughs> That's basically exactly what happened. I want to be in candle mass. And then well we just started. Yeah. And we yeah. just started like writing music catered to that. And then we, st we, we didn't have a singer. We kept working on the songs, and we had uh, three songs, no singer. And I thought ever having a singer was never going to happen. I, I thought, you know, like, only people we know are death metal, black metal. People that are in underground metal, they don't know how to sing. And so to me, I wasn't going to take anybody in the band that needed lessons or somebody that just kind of, you know, they kind of half-assed their way through vocals. I wanted them to actually be a trained person that knows what the fuck they're doing. And so I finished the demo. And I at Grave Hill in the middle, and we were touring and doing different stuff. And uh, my wife was like, hey, um, what about Melissa? And me being me, because I'm scatterbrained, I'm like, Melissa who? And she's all, you know, Melissa, 
Bob, Melissa, and you know we have a friend Bob Cassing that we're all been mutual friends with for years, and I'm like, Melissa can sing, and she's like, yes, mm-hmm. idiot, you know, and I'm like, okay, so <laughs> she takes out a YouTube video and shows me a YouTube of her singing "Hollowed Be Thy Name." First and foremost. If you can pull that off, holy shit. You know what I mean? That's not like no, no, some random person could sing that song. So when I heard that, I was like, okay, I need to call her. So I called her and I asked, I told her, hey, you know, we got this band. It's traditional metal, do metal, that sort of thing. Like Candlemass. She's like, well, I've never heard Candlemass. I'm like, well, listen to them. Yeah, he he friend request you friend requested me on Facebook. Like we'd known each other all well, yeah, these but years. We never, and then, yeah. and then out of the blue he friend requests me and the first question out of the gate is, Do you like Candlemas? Have you heard of Candlemas? And I said, No. <laughs> and then it was like I said, Here, we have these demo songs, they're already recorded. They're even partially mixed. Here, here's the songs. And yeah. sent them to her and she liked them and then she started doing vocals to them and then what happened was is that she comes over to Nelson, our guitarist, has his own little home studio. And so comes in and she we plug her in and she starts she starts singing on one of the songs and we all just turn and look at each other and we're like, Holy shit, are you serious? And then yeah. So here we mus- are. musically speaking, where were you specifically at in terms of bands? Were you just doing the the cover circuit? Did you have original projects outside of getting the call to join Stingy and Crown? Or did you record the demo at least? I was in a hard rock tribute band. I mean, not a tribute. Well, it's basically a hard rock cover band. So I would sing things like Iron Maiden to Metallica to UFO, you know. So I was doing all the songs that basically my dream set list, um, you know, Van Halen, Rush, you know, and it was all really challenging stuff. So, and I'm glad I had that experience because it kind of, you know, broadened my uh, experience. And so I'm glad that... And how long have you been a properly trained singer for? Um, I've been doing it for like mm, maybe 20 years, something like that. Well, also, too, she's also can play piano really well, actually, is on top of that, too. So that yeah. was also a huge help for us as well. The only problem with her playing piano is that she writes songs and gives them to us on piano. And we're idiots. Like, we, we're not real musicians. <laughs> and... She'll come in and say, yo, this is a riff, and she'll play the piano, and Nelson and I will look at each other like, I don't know what we're doing. <laughs> like, how are we going to make this into a riff? It's like we're riff. speaking two different yeah. languages. Yeah, it's like, how are we going to make this into a riff? So it's, 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 we've succeeded, but it's been a lot of work. But, I mean, yeah. you know. What have you learned most from working with a, a trained singer like Melissa? So far, I think it's just like um, we have to discuss what key we're in, and then we making adjustments when we come up with ideas on the spot. And then try to like, try to try to follow her lead sometimes because a lot of times I'm used to the music leading, not the vocals. And in this case, you kind of have to be conscious of what the vocals are going to do when you're writing the song. So does that force you guys to be more melodic when it comes to writing? In a sense. Okay. I mean, in a sense, but I mean, also too, like she can fill gaps. So it's like you know when she that's not necessarily words, but like she does the stuff that Messiah or, or Bruce Dickinson would do when they do those little fill-ins. I mean, to be honest, I've been the biggest fan of that my whole life. You know, as a metalhead from a, a little kid, so being able to be a part of something that where that happens is fucking a, nothing less than a miracle for me to be completely honest. So. And how did you, know. you guys get on your specific radar, Brian? Um. I think it was, I mean, Rhett's been a fan, uh, a fan, a friend. <laughs> I'm a fan too. He's been he's been a friend for a while. Yeah. And uh, the kind of on a side note, Rhett, and myself, were talking earlier. He's played the metal swap meet three times with three different bands. <laughs> Damn, dude! <laughs> I thought ridiculous. it was just one other band. Well, I already told I already told them already that I'm going to form a fourth band, yeah. and then we're going to play at some point. Yeah. you know, just just for fuck of it let's do it you know so i actually do have another, <laughs> another band yeah so, yeah but we yeah. know we know who's going on uh, next year yeah uh, yeah but uh, yeah he's been he's been a friend for a long time and uh, uh it's it's kind of just natural and um i like this band the the epic doom kind of style it's um it's not what i'm into uh, and I, I think it i think it, it fits our event yeah, I was I was thinking in the like originally when this whole thing was coming together and you know Evil Dead and Slough Fag and Slough Fag is you know they're very 
uh, we just got to play with them just recently in Chicago, and I've actually heard of them forever, but I've never actually seen them live. And I was thinking to myself, like when when they're playing, it's so traditional, you know, kind of more almost in the sense where they're just they're they they have kind of a little bit of a punk punk esteem, kind of. Mm-hmm. But I was thinking like when we we're on this fast, you know, Evil Dead, you know, and then oh. Gene Hoagland. I was like, okay, so it's always fast thrash. And then, you know, the opening band, I was thinking the Night Shadow. I was thinking mm-hmm. that they were going to be fast. And, you know, so I'm like, oh, boy, we're going to be <laughs> this, the sword. Like thong. the downer, yeah. Yeah, the sword. Everybody's yeah. like, fuck, you guys are so yeah. slow and boring, you know. But it's not the and first then, time we've been the odd man out. Yeah, I mean, California Death Fest, we were the only band with a female lead singer, and we were the only band that was uh, clean vocals. And the only one that didn't do Gravity Blasts, because everyone else did. Now, has that been a, a particular challenge for you personally, being, I mean, I don't get to see a lot of female-fronted bands anymore. But I don't get to see, not on top of that, I don't get to see a, very many great female-fronted bands. And what I saw today was, was just that. So has that been a challenge for you per, personally being in this community? No, I don't think so, because we played in Chicago. Like, every other band was female-fronted. So, you know, it was really good to see that representation. Yeah. Yeah. It, was, it was a weird experience because, like I said, again, talking of the death metal background and everything, is that I've played... I, more shows than I can remember. I mean, people will come up to me and talk about shows, and I forgot that. Oh, yeah, I did play that show. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, dude, my, my pedigree at this point is, like, over 30 years at this point, right? So I was, like, sitting there at the show at Legions of Metal, and, like, about the third band comes on, and I'm realizing this person singing and the person before sang. And the person before sang. So there was not one death metal vocalist. So it was an entire day of people singing. And I've never experienced that until that moment. You know what I mean? Like every band had a singer. Someone that can actually sing, not, you know, sing. So that was just really bizarre. Well, it seems like the tide's kind of turning as far as that goes. At at this moment, everything kind of comes and goes as far as like, Stylistically wise, well, yeah. the thrash scene and the death metal. Well, it has to. It has to grow. Evolve. I mean, it has whatnot. to evolve. It has to grow. But I mean, the other thing that's funny too is I remember being a teenager, and when you heard like like when I was first introduced to Merciful Fate, me and my friends were like, "Fuck, these guys are amazing." And then uh, the outside friends, I hate the singer. Mm-hmm. I can't stand the vocals. And then and then once death metal came in, oh, I can't stand the vocals. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, that became the norm. And then somebody starts singing again. Oh, I can't. Uh, I can't listen to Iron Maiden. You know, like, what? <laughs> you know, it has to be, you know, it has to be death or it has to be suffocation or whatever. So switching gears, so I want to go back to your, your guys' first album and just recording it for the, for the first time, obviously. Yeah. Uh, how did you specifically approach it, this, Melissa, when it came to just recording in general? Um, with a project, with a doom metal project, especially since it's uh, your first. Yeah. I mean, it was, uh, you know, Nelson was kind of in the driver's seat when it comes to recording. Uh, so I spent a lot of time over at his house. And so I had to record the vocals at his house and also keyboard tracks at his house. So, I mean, this time around, I'm hoping that I can get my own gear and just send him tracks. So it's a little that bit would more be convenient cool. because he yeah. lives like an hour and a half away from me. So it wasn't yeah. totally convenient. But, but yeah. So, and obviously with it coming out, I, and you had sent me a copy of it, and I didn't know what the fuck it was. I put it on, and I'm like, oh, shit, this is, like, what just heavy metal is. It doesn't, I've never heard Candlemass either. I'm not a Candlemass kind Ooh, of guy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I also don't play in a band with you, so it's yeah, fine. That's true. That's so, true. But, but my. Poor shame. Poor, <laughs> He can like what he wants, right? <laughs> but but in, in putting it on, I was like kind of blown away just by the overall sound oh, of it. Thank you. And is, this is your first time working with a female fronted. No, actually. No, it's not. Okay. No, I've been in a. I was in a rock and roll band, believe it or not. Um, that at the time we didn't have a name, and I quit the band, and then they had the name, and the name was horrible. So I'm not even going to say it. <laughs> and. Uh, Okay, so just the people that are aware, there's a band called Divine Eve. I play drums for them live. I have for some years now. And their guitarist, Zan, moved to L.A. This is years ago. It's in the 90s, mid-90s. And he, him and I formed a rock band, and we had a girl singer. But she really wasn't trained. She, really, she was more punk rock, I guess, because the band was kind of like Motorhead meets ACDC, that kind of. 
and uh, that was my first experience with a girl singer. But um, yeah, that was very short lived. So I got the fuck out of that, like you know, quick. And where would you guys like to see this project go? Where would you like to see it morph into from here at this specific moment? Oh man, I, I mean. I, I just honestly I just I'm always looking for opportunities so to me it's like I always I always trying to check things off the list that I haven't done which would, so that give, would me, be, give me one that you haven't done yet that you would love to do uh play Australia Japan I want to uh, play you know, keep it true man <laughs> yeah I would love to play I mean we're playing Germany uh next month we're playing hammer of doom yeah so. and I I've I've literally toured Europe a few times but I've never actually played Germany of all the places I have not played there <laughs> it's just totally yeah. weird I could say I played Portugal but I haven't played Germany and it's also weird uh, too that minus, minus I guess the scorpions and whatnot oh yeah you know there, there there's a there's a plethora of death metal bands that co- or thrashing death metal bands that come from Germany. Oh yeah. So it's weird that you haven't played it. I know it's just not, bizarre. You know. Yeah. So but I mean, it's it's kind of just how things happened, you know. But I mean, things like that, and I mean, I'd also like to, you know, just more opportunities to try to be on a bigger sh- bigger shows or bigger tours. That would be cool too. But what, I mean, musically speaking, where would you like this to go though? From um, here. Uh, honestly, I think that we're we're still kind of we're still kind of we're still kind of finding our way. I mean, we, we started off one way and, and the newer material that we're writing has kind of got a little bit more progression, I guess. Um, I hate using that word. Well, you're not, you never do that in your actual career though. Like I've never heard a progressive. No, I don't mean with. progressive. Like I'm, I'm going to play King Crimson. I mean, just like, I mean, <laughs> progress as in far as in, in songwriting, you know, like try to progress and like, try to be better musicians or at least try to come up with better hooks and better riffs and that that sort of thing you know um but i mean right now i mean we're 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 going to be recording our next album really soon so um it's it's i i think that i just i i want to grow i guess be the way to put it not progress grow (laughs) so there you go and when you're writing songs specifically for this project what is your primarily focus on is it because you, again, you're writing it on key, on the keyboard, so I don't know how you would go about writing songs on a keyboard. So can you give me just like a Reader's Digest version of where you start? <laughs> um, I don't know. I just it starts with a riff, you know, on keyboard, and then I kind of try to think of how that would translate to guitars. Um, so. And you then know, Nelson gets confused, <laughs> and he looks, and he's like, what the fuck am I supposed to do with this? Yeah, it, it, it was it, weird. I went over to his house once to just show him something, and he was kind of looking at me like, we were speaking completely different yeah. languages, yeah, and it wasn't yeah. working. Yeah, so. he's, he, he just has a hundred-yard stare, and you're just like, okay, forget it. <laughs> we'll so, it. how did you approach? How do you approach somebody like that and working with them to get this on on paper per se with somebody that's never done, that's never written yeah. this way before? It's well, I mean, we have multiple approaches. Like Nelson yeah. writes skeletons of songs, and then I put vocals on it, and then we just sort of hammer it out in the studio, and then yeah. there's stuff like ideas that I bring to them um, and, and then like we now, add on stuff to yeah. her ideas and then kind of you know it's kind of democratic in a sense we just kind of everybody kind of throws their their ideas in the mix yeah so it's just kind of like you know structure or like you know she'll have a bass like you know verse chorus and then we'll throw in you know some changes and you know how to end it or repeat or whatever yeah and then you know um, it like this song the new song that we played uh, Nelson had the the idea for it in the beginning and we wrote the end of it in just rehearsing like I just said hey let's try this and that's just how, kind of how it came out we kind of write stuff kind of off the cuff sometimes too just it just in rehearsal you now know? In st- Brian let's go to you real quick in structuring the bands for this specific event how do you put it as far as who's going to play first and second and third and um, how did you approach it this time just kind of the, I don't know. Like, uh, I thought the strut, the, 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 like, you mean who plays first? Uh, it just seems like a, it kind of like made sense. I don't know. It's makes sense in terms of what? Yeah. Music, musically wise, like, uh, or who's like, bigger? Like a band's of, history okay. plays a big role. Uh, like, uh, obviously, Evil Dead has a lot of history. Oh, yeah. Um, Slaufeg has a lot of history. Um, so that's, that's part of it. Like, I don't know. Maybe you get like a little extra. Bit of respect for that, oh, for, yeah. for um, you know what you've accomplished, um, and but it, it's be, it's definitely something you got to tell the bands about, 
You don't want to surprise them and say, oh, guess what? Uh, you're playing last or you're playing first. Uh, so Not like that's not happening. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Not here, but I mean just in general. Yeah. It's like you show up to the show and it's like, hey, you guys are playing last. 130. <laughs> yeah. Enjoy. Yes. Um, it, this event's easy because it doesn't go super late. Yeah. So if you do play last, it's not a bad place to be. No, in. no, not yeah. at all. Yeah. It's not, not at like all. playing at midnight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a, a lot of a, a lot of places like clubs and stuff. Nobody wants to play last. Yeah. You know what's worse than that? When you get on a festival that's playing in the middle of a forest in March, and it's like <laughs> ten degrees outside, and your band goes on at twelve thirty when you're supposed to be on at eight thirty, and then the headliner goes on at four a.m. Yeah. Well, Imagine fun. how fucking cold that is. That like, unbelievably cold. Like it's, it's like the opposite of this event. Yes, it is. <laughs> well, thank literally. God this is San Diego. And they're like, "Hey, stay up because we're gonna have fire dancers later." I'm like, stay up to what? Shit. Stay up to what? what the band's playing yeah, at 4 just don't, don't. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You're camping. Have fun. <laughs> you know. Oh, I thought it was really cool that you had a San Diego band. You know. Just oh yeah. They, you guys always do that, though. There's always, yeah, we, we, yeah, there's we always, always try to have oh, okay. at least one band. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Night nice Shadow, yeah, and they killed it. Oh, yeah. Very good band. Yeah, dual axe attack. Exactly. Yeah. Well, guys, I want to thank you again for giving me a few minutes of your time. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. You guys Thanks for having it. us. Thank so, you, brother. Appreciate that. Um, <laughs> Absolutely. Where can people find Stage and Crown and support the band? Um, you can find us on uh, well, Bandcamp. Bandcamp. Stadiumcrown.bandcamp.com. Uh, yeah, um, Instagram, Facebook, Facebook, Twitter. You know all the, all the places. Absolutely, and of course the San Diego Metal Swami. We can't forget that. So go ahead, give us your links there. Uh, Metalswami.com. Uh, yeah, and then the you know, socials. Love it. And then yeah. this happens once or twice a year. Once a year. Yeah. Once a year. So. Yeah. Alrighty, guys. Well, thanks again for giving me a couple minutes of your time and for another episode of Popper's Corner. We're out of here. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers.